Women's voice more use can we keep empowering people onto anything it can make a me along our game is somebody not Ning up kang in America la ibaka kang in Kasama slo ibaka kang in other part of the world Why then game in Romanta Lita come from the game is somebody not a so what kind of the wrong join us on our episode 27 la coming a lot of another wrong young lady celebrate can mean get a miss Lala to retail a firm and said again because we all know what she is doing she's an activist and a lot have to be said but I will just leave it on how to explain herself, I have one introduced in details there. Thank you and welcome to the Golden Bee Revolution. Thank you very much, Alaji, for having me. Um, it's an honor to be here on such a really wonderful platform as we're really? following your activities, so your programs, you. and I think they're really interesting. Thank you. Um, Assalamu alaikum, Mube Mube Nyum Program Mojiweka. My name is Lala Ture from Alaji Afanyaling. I am um, a women's rights activist, a youth leader. Um, I work with civil society organizations to promote the rights of women and young people in the Gambia. And uh, yeah, basically that is who I am. Yeah. So for so long I'll be like, la 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 la. Why is she so stupid? Why is she doing <laughs> this war, this that? And it's trying to tell the ladies, look, the guys cannot do it all. We have to go in there. This is a thing I will be like, yeah, that's not so often love some water like for our kill challenge and someone will be like, but what motivates you to go into this that you're doing? Yeah, I don't think it is challenging men, and I don't think it is starting a battle of men against women or women against men. Mm. It is um, championing a cause which will create platforms and opportunities for women okay. to have access to the same platforms that men have access to, wow. to showcase their talents, to explore their creativity, to show their potential to take part in national processes, in decision making, okay. have a seat on the table. You know, these are all things that we are championing, okay. but it's not to say that we are starting a battle of men against women or women against men. Oh. And I think that is where the misconception lies, because a lot of times when we talk about these issues that women go through in our societies, yeah. whether it is sexual violence, whether, whether it is lack of representation, yeah. all of these things, when you start talking about them, the conception, the concept is that or they're trying to take men's place in society, okay. or they're trying to disregard culture, they're trying to disregard religion. Okay. But what we are just doing is amplifying the voices of women okay. and making sure they have access to the same platforms where they can equally have a say and showcase what they've got. We started with this to address the myth directly because um, this is what has been trending on the social media right now. Everyone is like, Feminism is a crime or a war against men. Mm -hmm. So that's why I brought this one first. Mm -hmm. So you clear the air. Yeah. But now um, now that we clear the air now, I think the conversation will be more interesting now. Maybe someone will be like, I will not listen because she's gonna talk about women's rights, Musola Semen, Tuya Carola. But hence you clear the air now. Uh, I think it will not be fair. Let me know why Lala, how did you become Lala, the activism and what is like I'll be like, Wow, she's just doing this and maybe she is born to do this. Is it a passion that you grow to defend women's rights, or you, we are faced on some challenges that we really like, look, I think I have to go in for it, because you made it very clear, it's not a challenge, but it's a passion. But I want to uh, get it deeply, I just want you to go deep into this, that why did you choose activism, especially defending women's rights? Um, for a lot of us, um, growing in the Gambia, born in the Gambia, growing in the Gambia, having to wake up every day, living and seeing the experiences that people have to go through in this country. Yeah. You know, all the, dis the disempowerment, the lack of opportunities for young people, for women, for men to, you know, all these things that are going on in this country that is not to the favor of the people. Like, the when you talk about, or when you talk about sectors, when you talk about development, when you talk about progress, yeah. We are still lacking behind as a people and as a country. Okay. And there is a need to have people championing causes 
which will lead to the progress of this nation in one way or another, oh. which will liberate people, which will help amplify the voices of people, which will help create spaces, yeah. safe spaces for young people, for women, for you know, young girls, for, um, um, advocating for quality education for both young girls and young, and, 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 and young boys, yeah. advocating for good health care facilities for women, for men, for all citizens of this country. So just living in the Gambia every day, you get to live and experience and see firsthand yeah. all the problems that fe people continuously are faced with. Yeah. And I think that is a call for people who have the voice, for people who have the platform, for people who have the means yeah. to use their voice to speak on behalf of all other Gambians who may not, who maybe do not have the platform to do so, yeah. or maybe do not have the voice to do so, yeah. to speak on behalf of those Gambians and make sure their voices are heard yeah. and all these problems that they are faced with, the government, the civil society, the private sector, all of them yeah. coordinate their efforts and make sure that they serve in the best interest of the people and continue to put in efforts to you know, solve all these problems and create solutions, all these solutions to yeah. all the problems that we are faced with as a people. I think this is where the passion comes from. Mm -hmm. This is where the passion comes from. This is where the drive and the commitment comes from to continue to be the voice of all Gambians, not just women, yeah. but all Gambians, mm -hmm. young people, women, young girls who are continuously disempowered, sure. young women and girls who are continuously subjected to sexual and gender-based violence. Sure. You know, all of these things, this is where the passion comes from, basically. It comes from the need to want to do more for people and for countries. So, in short, you want to be like, Musol Kauma Nyanka Dang Susu Dlaltola, Kuli Dlalto Anim Marasetola Kila Kuodia Mujela, but Inyandaka Silotale, Kata Mindi Nyatolo Kuru Kela, Nyantol Falankele, Ko Anyandaka Kenyamina. Yeah, Muso but Muso ni kawal be in society. Ibe ya um roles and responsibilities satala. Ibe ya um um things satala they can offer. They have things to offer. Um and I don't think um 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 employment opportunities mm -hmm. or representation or political participation or participating in decision making processes they should be defined yeah. by one's gender. Yeah. They should be given to people who are competent mm -hmm and dedicated enough yeah. to, um, to, to, to deliver self-service service, um, who, who are able to do perfect mm -hmm. service delivery, you know. So, leadership quality. So, to basically household do Exactly. What is supposed to happen is um, w w um, jobs and responsibilities and whatever whatever positions we have in this country be given to people who are worthy of it, okay. who have proven that they have what it takes to sure. deliver yeah. to the best interest of the people, Very regardless well. of their gender. Sure. We have women and men experts in different areas so it should not be that men are given the positions to lead yeah. and a woman always comes second to them yeah, uh, yeah that is the, the so narrative in your, that in your opinion to. in this sense here do you think uh, the government is doing enough to protect the right of the women here because i i know from your profile you are one of those leading people that are fighting for the right of girls and the game here and moreover you are even a, cha a champion to that like you're the head representing the, uh, the government chapter here. So will you, uh, how will you classify this or how will you put this? Putting Gambia in a global image because the Golden Beach Revelations mission is to celebrate the Gambia as other giant countries are celebrated. Because the Gambia can be like United States, it can be like Singapore and others because we all have the human resources. So how will you put this? The Gambia in fighting for women's rights and other countries. Yeah, I'll just, comparison here. yeah, I would just like to say that guys, always put on your marks. I had to remove it because I was kind of suffocating from the talking. Oh, okay, but yeah. always have your marks on. Um, Love it. Yeah, um, I think I do not. I think the government can still do more oh. in 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 advocating or in protecting and promoting the rights of women Super. in creating platforms to empower women. So how or like I know they can do more, but now how about in your own in your own capacity? Do you think the government is doing enough? 
No, they are not doing enough. Wow. That is where the, the conversation of they need to do more comes from. Okay. Um, the government is not doing enough because if you look at the record of sexual violence cases, for example, with okay. have ha which have happened in this country um, since last year, okay. you realize that all of these cases, there's always a lot of talk, a lot of activists um, trying to champion it, a lot of people trying to make sure that the victims, mm -hmm. who are women and girls, yeah. get the justice that they deserve. Okay. But there is always some sort of lack of effort okay. from the government side. Okay. It's either they're not interested enough, or it's either the perpetrator is somebody they know and want to protect, okay. or it's either the stories of these women are just not important enough for them to prioritize. Okay. So when it comes to other issues affecting women too, when it comes to leadership, um, leadership and decision making, you look at, for example, the, our cabinet. How many cabinet ministers do we have? How many of them are women? Okay. The lack of representation or the underrepresentation of women in, 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 in the nation's top executive, the cabinet, says a lot about how serious our government, okay. how unserious our government is with women representation. Yeah. And I think when we go on international platforms representing the Gambia, um, we get to meet people from other countries where women to w women are given a voice. Okay. They have a platform okay. where women are represented. You look at other countries like Rwanda right now. You look at um, 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 Ethiopia. Yeah. Um, many African countries now are gradually, even Senegal, our next door, our next door neighbor, like they're gradually um, creating platforms or coming up with policies and ways to make sure that there is gender parity, that women okay. are represented, whether it is in parliament, in the judiciary, in the executive, and other top government parastat uh, parastatals, that women are in the leadership positions, are in positions where they can influence whatever decisions have been made right. on behalf of people and on behalf of the country. And I, I think this is something that is lacking in the Gambia, right. but I also will note that this is something that the draft constitution 20 2020 has addressed immensely because yeah. there are provisions in there like the schedule to where now um, the draft is, go is going to introduce 14 new seats in the parliament that yeah. will be strictly um, given to women. That um, means like we're on a mission to push the Gambia on the global stage. Yeah, let's let's put it that way. I think there are steps, gradual steps, especially with these reforms going on. Okay. There are gradual steps that um, these institutions leading these reforms are taking. For example, the CRC introducing provisions in the draft constitution to make sure that women have seats in the legislative and in the judiciary and um, local government and equally young people too. Because yeah. when you talk about women, you also have young women who find it even more difficult yep. than maybe older women do in um, penetrating um, political party structures or leadership structures okay. because they hardly even heard of. Yep. So um, the, the, when it comes to young people, the draft constitution also has provisions um, in, in the local government where there is, is a requirement that a percentage of the local government representatives have to, to be, be young people. Very well, yeah. So these are all these are that all things that I think. This will help us to know that direction. yes, we, we, mm -hmm. we have a voice here and thank God that you've mentioned that um, it's going to be a process that is going to push Gambia forward. This will clear also the myth that people will be saying Gambia and Tala, Gambia the Musadem. But this is a, a, a lucky statement that we had from you and I'm sure this will go. But uh, we have a quick video that we did yesterday and I want you to take a look at it and we will get a comment from it where you know, some people send a comment on our uh, topic for the day today. Kuma ala ala nyamina durang Golden Beauty Revolution na nka opinion sikin kila nka fintu mwaka na nika kacha Kuala mwaka kwa min relate min na Sako bita for mwaka topi kwa min kwa min kata young people in the politics la Bi afe na hali na tuluku ya restaurant na member Bruce Bito on table out la Dotlu la karola anene wala kare mwaka diyamu no Ni mwaka kwa mwaka la puni mwaka kwa 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 mwaka I'm a final year um, uh, student at the University of the Gambia, uh, pursuing um, career in political science. And uh, I'm a youth activist, youth leader, and also the founder of Youth Front uh, uh, Association. It's um, a topic pertaining youth participation in politics. Um, this is quite phenomenal. Of course, uh, it's an area that um, I am engaged into. 
Um, firstly, when you look at the history of youth's uh, participation in Gambia, uh, in Gambian politics, you tend to see that uh, our participation as youth in politics, at our participation yesterday in politics, uh, you tend to see that um, it was very minimal for the fact that uh, one could say the, the then political system is not uh, uh, that much accommodative to, for youths to participate in politics. Uh, looking at today's uh, political uh, trajectory, you tend to say that, well, our participation in politics uh, is uh, increasing by day. Um, one, wh wh what changes this? One could also say it's because of the political system we have in place. Uh, and I could give uh, a quick analysis on that. When you look at the then um, leadership, for instance, under the former regime, we tend to see that um, it was not democratic and uh, it would not just allow youths to come and participate. And as a result of that, this has uh, uh, led many people to, uh, uh, I mean, avoid um, taking part into issues that affect them. And here, when you talk about politics, what comes to mind is um, Party, uh, party politics, for instance, the politicians um, out there who are at the hands of the affairs are uh, making decisions that will affect us at the end of the day. But how do you take part into some of these issues? Uh, maybe we are not seeing this. Until 2016, in 2016, something happened in the Gambia, and it was momentous, a momentary moment for every Gambian, because this was when we see many people commenting and also taking part into politics. Uh, when you look at or analyze the IEC result of 2016, you, t you could say, compared to the 20, uh, 20, uh, uh, 2011, you would see that we have uh, a vast, huge uh, difference um, when, it, when it comes to uh, the increment of uh, people who participated. Mostly youths participated more. Why was this? Because uh, I could say this moment uh, coincided with uh, um, an exodus of people traveling out seeking for greener pasture. This was why one could say the participation increased uh, exponentially in 2016. But now, is this really important? Uh, our participation in politics, is it really important? Firstly, you need to look at, let's narrow this down, you need to look at um, your, your community level, for instance, individual level. How does politics affect you in your various communities? We all come from various communities. For instance, I might come from, okay, Brufoot as a village. Brufoot has an issue that affects them. What are you doing towards ensuring that that very issue is resolved or is redressed? This is something that you need to question yourself. You go to, uh, I mean, um, that is community level. You go to national level also. You tend to see that, okay, now you have leaders that will represent you at the highest uh, uh, level. So this, they make decisions. Of course, these decisions will come at the end of the day to affect you. What do you do to uh, affect? or uh, uh, deciding not to participate in politics. Uh, in other way, it means you are participating for the people you wouldn't want to be in the positions to lead you at the end of the day, like uh, the, former, uh, the famous scholar Socrates will say, uh, if you did not participate in politics, you end up being ruled by the inferiors. If that happens, at the end of the day, those who will uh, take the mantle of leadership, they will come and decide, make decisions that you will not be okay with, that I will not be okay with, and the Gambians will not be okay with. But what will you do? He has the power. He has the legitimacy, the authority to make those decisions. But you never take part to ensure that he was never there. So who pays the price? Like uh, the famous uh, that Indian scholar, uh, Chagravati uh, Raja Gobarchari, he said when politics tumbles, the nation pays the price. Meaning we should also take part in the decisions so that when political decisions are at uh, our door seeking for our approvals to be in those political offices, we make those, that uh, wise decision. Participate by voting, by taking part in the actions or the decisions that they are to, uh, they are to make. I think I think that the funding is the funding of the participation of the funding of the political I have been told participate in politics, for instance. Uh, because ni uh, funding kill, um, 
min sen sambano nyato wala nen tolbe ka fota nyoka nga jibe ko mi an ka sambe sambano nyato min keta nambe election aussi tam min keta na politicien olti be min decision le tala nyanta ke tanya di la important ta bakel because min ka ken ka mistego min ke wala gambia no nda fala ko bikam biran kam mira of course but nan nata kom politiko la ka rol min yaron ko bina ka na leader di wodo na 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 cool ka 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 lam fa bakel because um ito le kata anka min ka kenen nga carte fa ito le bira jane ken multi min alon ko ibe 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 ko le kere men ka binan to le na fala wala aben to le toral ba neta sira jane ko ndeta o ken ndeta carte fa la ndeta data politiko ko no ite malon ko ku ku keta jane politically because min ka ken ka mistego min ke walem gambia no nda fala ko bikam biran kam mira of course but nan nata kom politiko la karol min yaron ko bina kere na leader di wodo na 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 cool ka 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 lam fa bakel because um ito le kata anka min ka kenen nga carte fa ito so i want us to have a quick review on what he said here and then this is just now sticking us from talking about the women empowerment here or still we are still part of it but now we are going to take another direction maybe i would call it shift a little bit from what we discussed now and then this is leading us into like asking this question from his statement here that young people into politics is something that many people are not taking it to be uh, taking it as something serious or maybe it's like it's too early mm -hmm. and of recent we also so like you took a giant step in uh, going into politics so i want to know um do you think is the right thing for people to go into politics at an early stage yeah i think um we have to for the longest time the narrative around gambling politics has always been um it is for the elderly it is for the older people um, and we've seen how old people have contributed a lot in our national politics um, they have contributed a lot in many ways um, the formation of political parties during the struggle the things that um, political party leaders did for this country and all of that but it gets to a point you realize there is there is a need, there is a huge vacuum, and there is a need for young people to equally take part and be um, um, and actively participate in, uh, in, 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 in politics through political party structures, independently, whatever, but just participate in, political, um, in, in all national politic, polit political activities. Um, you realize that, like Babu was saying in the, Babu was saying in the video, that for the longest time, for a lot of us young people, we were born in the dictatorship. So we grew up under a system of governance where our participation was, high, was highly limited and there, there, there was to a certain extent a lot of things that we couldn't do, we couldn't participate in, we couldn't say. Um, so moving on from that, in our quest to build a more democratic society, in our quest to build um, democratic institutions, to transform Gambia from what it is now to what we want it to be, it is very important that young people take a stance and start getting in themselves interested um, and participate in national politics. I, when, I, when I decided, when I made the decision to join a political party, a lot of people came to me with, oh, but you're too young. You're only 22. You should have waited until you're maybe 35 or something. That's a good age to be, be involved in politics because politics is, has been labeled as a dating game for the elderly and the corrupt. And, 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 and the greedy. So I get to ask this question, if this is what we have labeled politics to be, a game of the old and the corrupt and the greedy, who is, it's up to us now to change that narrative. But what happens if all the young people, all the brilliant young people are taught that it is way better to be a doctor, it is way better to want to be an engineer, it is way better to want to be everything else except to be a politician, then we are still leaving politics to the hands of people who are not competent enough or who do not have the required leadership skills to transform or to give, give in what it takes or to deliver to the expectations of the people and the country. So it is about time that we start setting these spaces and the platforms and start encouraging young people who believe have the potential, sure. have the leadership uh, requirements, have what it takes, have the patriotism, have the, 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 the courage, um, the passion, which is very important, to, um, to, um, co to contribute to the vibrant socio-economic and political development of the Gambia. So I think if we are to change the narrative around politics, ar around what politics is, 
what politicians are supposed to be like. We have to encourage the younger generation of youth leaders, the younger generation of, of, of brilliant young people to participate in politics. Um, I will give you an example. I have been an activist for years. I have worked with government, I've worked with civil society, I've worked with activities, I've traveled outside this country, we've worked with international organizations, but there is only so much that you can do as an activist. You can influence policies, you can make changes. We've done that in this country as, as activists over and over again. Yeah. But until you are a part of the system you want to change, there is always there is only so much you can do. So I think it's about time that we start sifting our, our, our approach and, al and also making sure that we encourage young people to be a part of the politics because at the end of the day, yeah. whether you're a doctor or an engineer or whatever you are, Decisions that are made by politicians, in policies that are introduced and passed by politicians are always going to affect your life, your work life, your professional life, your personal life, your environment, the communities you live in, your kids, the school they attend, the healthcare they have access to, all of these things. They're influenced by politicians, they're decisions taken by politicians. So until we accept that reality and start taking part in the process of taking these decisions ourselves, we are going to be in the same circle talking about the same problems of redefining what politics is supposed to be for Gambia and Gambians. One thing that sounds funny, um, anytime I hear people making a statement that young people should not go into politics, is that why do we trust young doctors, young engineers, young nurses, and even young pilots, but still we don't want to trust young people to take the lead? Those born in the 60s, they are, they are more of 60 ideology of a way of ruling. And they are a million people who are more than the world. So I think there is no way Nyandaka young people will kick out from the political arena. But still, um, we have another uh, person who made uh, such a re remarks about uh, women participation in the politics, and especially uh, what can we do to empower them and to clear some myth. So we may also take a look at that video. We have a comment from her too. Yeah, I am here to sound my opinion on um youth political participation, especially women. Um, first to talk about the fact that uh, youths and women of this country um, constitute 67 to 68 percent of um, the population and also women are up to 56 percent of the population of the Gambia according to the last census. So it is important that we take direct and active participation in politics and then to do away with the uh, mantra that I am not into politics, it's not my business. Um, the problem is if you say it's not your business, somebody else would come and take charge so in order to avoid things like that it is important that um, young people take the lead and then there are very many ways in which a person can take the lead in politics not just by directly taking part in politics that is to run for office but also to serve as checks and balances to political officials this can happen when we keep close observation to things they do the actions they make and certain policies that we were promised and how most especially our phones have been managed this can be done to make sure we keep um, our politicians to, to, about things that they promise to do and or not. Second way in which um, people can take part in politics is the fact that we can also serve as ambassadors to also advocate for people to take active part in politics. As we all know, next year, by Allah's grace, we are going to face political activities in the country, ranging from electoral education to re voter registration to campaigns and eventually election, to select people that, we, that are going to man and manage the affairs of this country in the next five years. And we as young people cannot continue to fold our hands and start blaming the elderly for taking decisions on our behalf when we have this mentality that we are not part of politics. So if we cannot uh, in a way run for offices, which is going to be good, but then if that is going to be a problem, we can also take part in listening to their policies, constructively criticize, criticize and then scrutinize things that they are putting on the table so we know how to make sure we inform our people so they take advanced decisions when it comes to our affairs. Because the problem is this, if we don't take part and then responsibly Oh, we owe it to our country. If that does not happen, then we are going to affect the situations this country is going to be in. And then finally, to come and talk about the issue of women in politics. Over the years, we've seen that women mostly are active in politics, but from the back, which is they serve as the cooks and also clappers for men to take the lead. And then what this has to end, because the future is feminist, like we said, and then in order for us to 
take active part in politics, it is important that we realize that the population of women in this country is growing, especially among the educated women. I'll take the University of the Gambia as a reference. We had our first uh, president who is a female and she was able to do tremendous developments in the university and other institutions like MDI, GTTI to name just a few. So. If we have a woman that is a candidate, I'm not going to mention names, but came out to say that she wants to run for presidency, it is our responsibility as women not to undermine competence, let nobody quote me wrong, but also to support, to show that we as a, as a, as a society are ready to embrace women leadership. So what can happen is this, I'll advise all our mothers out there, the sisters and aunties that are out there, supporting other politicians to come up to also take part in politics from local government and to national uh, uh, to make reference to Rahi Malik Law of um, Banjo we've seen how much of a development she's trying to put in and she's a woman and to name others that are also taking part to make sure that um, this country is pushed forward so my advice to people that have this mentality that it's not my business I don't want to take part in politics whether we want it or not Politics is what defines us as a person or as a people. So it is important that we take active part in politics. One, if we cannot run for offices, we need to serve as checks and balances for these people. And we make sure we serve as president. I believe we have learned something from this one too. And it's very, the message is very, very clear. It's more related to the first one here. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to give you this opportunity. Like I'm sure today lots of people are watching this uh, show right now. And it's empowering women and why young people into politics, especially if you're a lady, and there are so many things available to that. I want you to look at the camera there. Talk to that girl who is sitting at home and thinks politics is a wrong place. I want you to use your motivation here. Use all the energy you've ever had. I want to be a dictator now. I want you to get yourself prepared give yourself that flow that you've never done before. Talk to her that politics is a right channel for you. Right. Um, so if I had, um, if I have a young girl or a young woman like myself. You have it already. Watching this show right now, what I would say is follow your passion, follow your heart. If it's leadership that you want to do, if it's politics that you think you're interested in, if it's um, changing your country, what you want to do, go for it. Do not let anything get into your way. You're going to face barriers. There will always be problems. There are socio-cultural barriers that we all have to, um, we, we are all faced with all these problems of cultural barriers, of societal um, definitions of what we are supposed to do as women. All of these things will come along in the way, but do not let it, um, do not let it do not let it distract you you have so much to give you have so much talent you have so much potential you have so much to contribute to the vibrant socioeconomic development of this country you have so much talent in you and this country needs you to take that right decision to take part in politics and decision making do not let anybody tell you otherwise and prepare yourself grow a thick skin Prepare yourself and know that this is a society where, as a woman, if you come out and join politics, you're going to be called names. You're, go you're going to be questioned beyond um, 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 reasonable doubt. You're going to have your um, everything that you've done in your life, your past, your present, everything, every decision that, decision that you made in the past or are making now will be questioned. And you will have people label you and call you names. But these are all distractions that you should not give in to. Believe in yourself, believe in your talent, believe in your potential, believe in that passion you have to change this country for better for the people of this country and for this country and do what you have to do to get this country to where it needs to be. That's all I have to say. With that, if you do, you will keep celebrating the red, white, blue, white, green color and we will put the Gambia on the strongest ladder. We go for a short break. When you come back, we continue with the show.
It is not a wrong decision to go into politics. So, it is my GBK and then flex here in Jantula. It's time to prove that no more. Kaja come like, yes, Gambia at the council of Kaki. We are not only going to remain being a foot soldiers for the politicians or only pro killer crowd the Kashiandi by entertaining them with words or only killer t shirts or junkie celebrate. But we want our voice to be heard now and then this is the right time and this is the right place and this is the right moment. For Alialana Almalo, funding Ken Pedro, Fuka Gamba Samanatola and Badu Hokel. So, it is my GBK. Joining can I continue with uh, Mrs. Lalala, Puruka along Samina can occur and Puruka Gambia Samanyatola. But also, as a quick reminder to you, any I'm for Jimmy on a bill of talent, if you think drinking is your talent, come to the Golden Beer Revolution, be celebrate like Kaja, come like we are going to put the Gambia on the strongest ladder, la. the mission is possible and we are going to make it, inshallah. So, with that, uh, Ms. Lalala, welcome back and Thank I hope you, you had a nice break. Thank you. Very well. Yeah. Let's continue from where we stop. There is a lady in America, her name is Marie Sibo. I hope you know her. She is a very famous YouTuber. She also sent in a video where she gave her comment on young people into politics and using the American ideology, a country that everyone dreams of uh, to go there or thinks they are the best in the world. So let's hear her part of her view on this particular topic and so stay close. Hi, I'm Sibo, um, founder and content creator for the online platform Siboya that you will see on Facebook, YouTube, as well as Instagram. Firstly, I want to thank Golden Bee Revolution for considering me to come and discuss with you all the importance of young people entering, entering the field of politics, especially young women. Granted, I may not be actively into politics or a politician at all, but I do think it's important for young people to understand that we know our issues better than anybody else. We have an idea of what we need to excel better than anybody else. And if we don't enter the field of politics, the field of arts and media, the field of education, even taking leadership roles in religious education too, or religious leadership, if we don't enter these realms, we don't enter these you know these conference rooms or we don't have a seat at the table people will continue to either dictate for us what is best for us or they will ignore us they wouldn't pay attention to us because what affects me as a youth may not be important to someone who isn't of you know our group our age group or whatever the case may be so i think it is truly important for young people to enter the field of politics in any way that you can even if it's volunteering in your local, you know, local government offices or whatever the case may be. You don't have to necessarily be a member of a political party to be involved in politics. Just be someone who is interested in what young Gambians need and how young Gambians can excel. We all know that there's a lot of young Gambians who graduate school and they have no positions to work in if they don't know anybody. We know that there's a lot of young people who subdue to end up going on the back way. We know there's a lot of young people who just are, they, they've lost hope. They have no hope. So if they don't see someone that looks like them in their public office, they will continue to see no hope. But seeing young, 
humble Gambians in politics will always be promising to the youth, especially the generations to come, to see that we're so used to seeing my dad, my uncle is in politics. What about my brother? What about my cousin? It's always important to see young people in the face of trying to change and develop and, you know, help Gambia. I think it's also especially important for young women. It's so important for young women to be involved because we we know what we go through as women. There are Gambian women who die at the delivery table, you know, when they're giving birth. There are young women who have, or there are women in general who, you know, pass away with a live child in their belly and get buried that way. There are women who face domestic violence. There are women who face sexual abuse. There are women who face a lot of things that our country, our government, and our communities are not shedding enough light on. So, as mentioned, those changes don't have to be made in public office. Those of us in the media, we can do what we can do to shed light on these issues. But we do need young women in the government to have a seat at the table and advocate for change for the future of our young women and our young girls. Only the youth can do that. Only the youth can be a true voice to the generations to come. It's kind of just like how we argue in the United States that the Congress is full of old white men and they're the ones who are fighting um, for abortion and determining what the consequences are for, you know, rape and things like that. How can older men sit and dictate what benefits a young woman? Only young women can speak to that truth. A lot of us have experiences where we have a lot to share with people, and it is rather unfortunate that our culture sometimes silences young people, especially young women. But alhamdulillah, times have changed. Freedom of speech is at an all-time high right now, and all of us have a lot of great ideas to share. There's so many young, talented people in Gambia that I personally met as of late that I'm truly truly inspired by so my message to all young people is anything that you can do and if politics is your way don't let anybody stop you and get in the way of that just push forward and be the change that Gambia needs we can't wait for people to do it for us we have to do it for ourselves so that's pretty much what I have to say with regards to young people especially young women joining politics I think it's crucial and I think it's I hope not a view me like and especially like which is uh, a la fat meme for is more touching is that having old people trying to dictate the lives of the young people. What do you see on that? Yeah, I think um, one, one thing that I actually liked from the, everything that she said was how being um, part of politics or taking part in political processes is not just necessarily joining political party structures. It's not necessarily having political party structures give you positions within the ex internal executives or nominate you to run for office or whatever. We have, a, we are a country of more than half, more than half of our population is made up of young people. Yeah. About 60% or more yeah. are young people. Sure. So this is a very significant group in our society. Yeah. And not all of or not everybody from that 60% or more is going to be a, an executive member of a political party or a nominated member or serve in parliament or be a leader of some party state or, or whatnot. But when we talk about mainstreaming youth and gender issues across the board, um, and when we talk about youth participation in politics, we are talking about yourself. We are talking about the doctor, the young doctor in the hospital. We are talking about all young people across uh, d working in different walks of lives you know sure. but their interest is not just to be in the forefront to be to, to 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 be given a position the interest should be participating making sure you influence decisions that are made by politicians on your behalf as young people sure. scrutinizing decisions that are made on your behalf making sure that you are represented enough to make sure the person that is in there to speak on your behalf sure. to speak on your issues knows your issues because they're living it too because they're young people too because they're experiencing it too yeah. and also making sure that you take part in all processes that hold your representatives accountable yeah. as young people these are all ways through which we can participate in politics so when we talk about political participation i understand a lot of people understand it to be 
or I have to be like, like Lala Toure, I have to go and join a political party, mm. or I have to be like so-and-so, I have to be nominate, nominated to, to sit in a political party executive. It is not that. Yeah. Just It is not limited to that. Sure. It is the young person all the way in URR being able to hold their representative accountable and being able to understand issues that are happening and being able to scrutinize and constructively criticize to make sure whatever decisions are made serve in their interest and this can only be done if we are represented if we have fair representation of young people um not just in parliament but that we have youth issues youth representation mainstreamed in different developmental sectors of the country and then back to what she said about old people taking decisions on our behalf. Just a couple of months ago, before the, the parliamentary sessions were closed, mm -hmm. they, they had parliamentary bills on, on, on skin, uh, parliamentary debates on the skin bleaching um, ratification that bill and the, the, the labor, um, you know, the duration for which women can, can be at home after they deliver and all of that. Yeah. And you realize that this is a house, 58 representatives with less than 10 women less than 10 women with one young woman uh, correct me if i'm wrong but uh, yakuma is the only young woman in that parliament okay. uh, when you when you when you go by the youth definition age since, the, to 35, yeah. since the only young person in that parliament yeah. uh, that i know of and there are less than 10 women and you have a parliament of 58 members Discussion debating issues affairs. relating to women when there are not women enough women there to speak for themselves so everything that she said is absolutely right and i agree with it and until we have young people and women having seats on these platforms where decisions are made on their behalf yeah. we are going to continue speaking on the same problem over and over we can there are certain issues that you're only able to relate to you're only able to make a decision on if you leave it sure. when women make decisions on issues of sexual violence they understand it because they have daughters because they go through it because they go through harassment it's not just the rape yeah. it's just passing through s men sitting down somewhere and they think they can can't call you they can see you or your body looks this or you look that you know all of these things so when we are passing policies on those things we understand how it feels because we live it every day it's our lives it's a daily encounter that we have to go through yeah. so these are not things that men will understand from a male perspective because they are not living it yeah. and we have to also when you talk about women and youth issues their representation political parties government institutions they have these things that they do like oh okay w w when you ask the political party um how are young people and women represented oh we have a youth wing or they tell you oh we have a woman wing so it's like they've limited what women and young people can do to positions they can occupy in the youth wing and the women wing it's like that is your reserve yeah, but yeah. when it comes to expert structures like it's for you know it's it's for other people yeah. so we have to mainstream gender and youth issues across the board it's not just limiting it to youth issues and women issues across the board because we have women and young people who are experts in areas different developmental sectors um, areas and they have to have a seat on the table and they need their voices heard Very well. yeah. thank you so much this is just like asking uh, a, a monkey to determine what type of a shell a turtle will have to use mm -hmm. is just very funny I hope we will realize this mistake and rectify it as soon I want to put to you that I um, mean again here especially still it's about women empowerment we have a uh, beautiful handworks here that are done by ladies especially recently we met uh, BNK fashion design mm -hmm. uh, who is located around uh, somewhere at Tabokoto she uh, she's sent, she sent some of the photos of her work and we want to show you whether you think this is a good thing to empower women by doing such a work because she does this work with the recycled things and it's her own handmade. So photos of it will appear shortly. Please. 
this is part of the works that, that she does. And we don't even know that, do you have love for shoes? I do, and I actually buy stuff from her. Wow. And how does it mean, like, if I was to tell you there is one of these shoes that belongs to you? Really? Yeah, very well. Oh, wow. That would be great. That would be a gift from <laughs> her, B and K. She, wow. she celebrated knowing that you were coming, and she's like, I don't have anything much to say, but she's an amazing lady. I have to celebrate her. So, oh. Golden Beauty Revolution, what Thank do you think you. I can do? I was like, in the Gambia here, we will scout people, bring you to the global stage, and celebrate you, but we will not let you go free just by giving you words to say what you've been doing. But we have to say a thank you for what you are doing. And here is a colorful design. You are free to choose any code that you want, and we will hand it over to you. Thank you. Anytime you're done, you can go to the shop there, and you can have it. Thank you. And to you, the viewer there, you can uh, meet the uh, BNK fashion design if you think you are so much in love with such a design which is a Gambian made it is not Nike, Adidas or Reebok but it's a Gambian made and you can contact her on 9325990 let's empower Gambian women let's empower Gambian goods so can I have your final statement yeah I'd like to thank you very much for having me on this platform I'd like to thank all the viewers who um, were watching um, the show and I also like to just use this opportunity to call on young people, to call on young women, to come join us and, you know, study political parties in the Gambia, study their policies, study their manifestos, you know, study their history, read about political parties, get to choose the one that you think aligns with your belief, with your ideology, the one that you think has the best interest of this country at heart, and join that political party. Don't just be at home or wherever you are and decide not to be a part of politics because at the end of the day whatever decisions that are made by politicians they have an, an effect on us they affect us directly or indirectly they affect everything that we do and everything in this country um, is affected by the policies that they make too so take up the challenge make sure start with knowing who your representative is start with knowing who your national assembly member is start with hold it start with holding them accountable start with reading the policies and laws that we have in this country we have a draft constitution that will be tabled before the parliament early september for the parliamentary debate and scrutiny make sure that you read the content that it has on youth empowerment on women empowerment in politics and representation and make sure when your parliamentarian, your national assembly member debates on these things in the parliament, they debate on it based on your interest. Um, so this is, this is all I have to say. And I hope come 2021, we would register achievement in a number of young people and young women who, who buy in... Um, um, who will vie for positions in 2022 parliamentary elections and 2023 local government elections, but also register achievement in the number of young people who will turn out and vote for the 2021 um, presidential elections. So um, keep up the good fight, take up the challenge, and remember, this country is ours to change, and nobody is going to do that for us. So it's up to you to make the decisions to do what you have to do to bring about the change that we want to see in this country. Thank you. Finally, you cannot win a battle without fighting. Start the fight, take the lead, share your voice, we celebrate the Gambia. It is not only by sitting at home or only watching and celebrating other people. Also, do what we do something that we will celebrate you. The Golden Bee Revolution's global stage is always available for you. Like I always say, if drinking is your talent, come to the Golden Bee Revolution, we will celebrate you. With that, see you next week. I am your host, Lai Chandaswari. Bye-bye. <laughs>